Good morning. It is August 11, 2014. This is Jason Horak reporting on the ongoing adventures of the Dodge Daytona electric vehicle. I'm standing outside the Dury Lodge this morning here in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Um, one day prior to the Electric Vehicle Converters Convention for 2014. Um, came a little bit early as I tried to get here to break my car in advance of the show. Uh, seems to be the general way that works out. Um, but mainly I just want to tool around Cape Girardeau a bit. Um, visit, you know, go to, go to some stores. You know, who knows? Maybe I'll buy a tablet. We'll see. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to head over to the EVTV shop, um, see what they're all up to with their smart build team, and it uh, should, be, should be kind of fun. So anyway, I just wanted to give a little introduction, and I'll try to film some stuff throughout the day um, and actually make some good video this year. That's kind of one of my main goals, is not to be spent spending the whole time fixing my car and instead actually make some video and uh, document the experience. So here we are at EVCON 2014, day T minus one of the actual event sh starting. Um, I arrived a little early so I can help out with things with my theory. Um, and since I was here, I figured I would go ahead and charge my car. Um, so I'm taking advantage of Jack's GE Watt station that he has here on, on the wall. Uh, which is a J1772 uh, type plug and here so since I don't use that I have David Kurzel's um, J1772 to NEMA 14-50 adapter this handy little unit um, allows me to utilize my standard NEMA 14-50 charge plug and uh, charge my car this has worked out well in the past so I have 25 feet of uh, 50 amp rated cable that goes around here and into my twist lock uh, connector, uh, just as I've shown multiple times on previous videos. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's that's closing right there like that. Twist the lock, and we're on. So what, what I ran into was that my charger buddy didn't work. Okay, so the solution was to take the charger buddy apart, take a look at the wiring, and try to figure out what was going on with this thing. Um, so basically, if you remember from the previous video, this is the extension cord end that I had chopped off and wired in here directly. And so we have neutral, hot, and ground on there ground is green that goes to the ground here that it happens to be wrapped in uh, electrical tape. The hot goes to here which is wired into the uh, the black hot coming in from the 220 and the white previously was wired here to the neutral um, coming in from the 220. That seemed pretty logical to me um, but unfortunately that does not work in all situations because apparently the way that they do uh, a plug that can do both 220 and 110 is to uh, <laughs> jack one up in the thing um, <laughs> is that uh, they ignore the neutral lead um, so as one of my subscribers on YouTube suggested I wired in the white lead to the other hot so the red is the white lead um, and then the black is of course still attached to the black, ground is still ground. And what that does is that means that this little adapter, this little uh, is, is wired up to the Manzanita specifications where the two hots are wired, the neutral is ignored, and the, uh, the ground is wired, actually works here as well. <laughs> so now I can use the 110 uh, adapter. Also, it works with the David Kurzel J1772 to um, NEMA 14-50 adapter because that's how that's wired as well. So, because when I had pulled that apart, 
the uh, neutral lead in that is simply not hooked up. It has a, has a plug very similar to this one, and the neutral lead is just not wired to anything. Which makes sense, because the J1772 apparently does not use the neutral lead at all. Um, so, there's nowhere to hook it up to. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so that's the, the whole fix there. Um, I plugged this in and tested it and it seems to work just fine now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get her all put back together so it's show worthy once again. Alrighty then, so that did the trick. The uh, little change worked perfectly. The Charger Buddy now has a voltage that it's showing, currently to 3.5. The charger is charging. Flux capacitor is fluxing, all is well once again in the world. Um, so, and now I can use my J1772 adapter, as well as theoretically the um, 110 volt adapter as well, and everything will just work. Yay for simple wiring! <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to throw out a thanks to my friends on YouTube that helped me out with this particular issue. And uh, also the guys here at the show that kind of helped clarify what was going on with that uh, European wiring. Um, so, thank you very much. And just like magic, the Charger Buddy saw 210 volts and cut power to the charger. And so it is now off and the car is fully charged as far as I'm concerned. And we're good to go. So, that's it for that whole ordeal. So here we are in Cape Girardeau and every year I've gone over the big bridge just for the fun of it so I'll go, let's go ahead and do that but check out this moon. Hoping that it's going to come out okay on the film but this moon is amazing. It's so red and dark and my camera is so bad it probably won't come out very well but that's all right. Mississippi River. some still shots. It looks really cool. It's very orange. Straight up orange. And we are now in Illinois. Seems to be a big uh, casino or something going on over there. Oop, South Keep Road. Let's go just a little bit past that. So the peepers are out. It's bog right here. But yeah, that moon is just crazy. And I don't think my camera is even picking it up at all. Oh well. Okay, so here we are on the other side of the Jefferson Memorial Bridge from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And uh, we're actually in Illinois now, just a little bit. And I just happened to check out this really cool moon that has uh, just above the horizon. It's very colorful. Um, and I thought I would try to get a video of it. Pretty nifty.